All right, guys, so this is my interview with Anita Stewart. Uh, unfortunately, I had another audio glitch where it didn't pick up my audio this time around. So you're listening to a voiceover recorded after the interview, and I'll just repeat the questions and uh, fill in the audio that I can remember. And uh, you, yeah, please don't be mad when my lips don't match up to the voiceover because I'll be damned if I know what I said. <laughs> so the first question I asked Miss Stewart was, uh, you know, just to tell us a little bit more about herself, because there isn't a whole lot of information on her public profiles to find, and uh, I didn't know anything about her going in, so uh, this was her response. Uh, Well, I'm Anita Stewart. I go by AF because there's a cookbook author in Canada where I live that is Anita Stewart, so I figured I'd better try something else as a pen name (laughs) if I didn't want all the, the cookbook fans getting confused. Um, so, uh, I live in Nova Scotia on the Atlantic coast of Canada. Um, most of what I write is darker fantasy and horror and, but I also write a little poetry and basically the rest of my life's pretty boring. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm just, you know, get up in the morning, open the computer, have breakfast, yell at the computer sometimes during the day cause it doesn't do what you want, but. During this segment, I actually had a little bit of callback to the first interview I did with Nikki Hicks when we were talking about how authors don't have interesting lives and people always assume we do because we write crazy shit. And so we had a little bit of a, I had a little bit of callback towards that. And then we picked up with a more answer from her. Yeah, if, if I wrote my memoir, it would probably be about like two chapters. Yeah, it's like, I was born, I didn't do much except write, I died. Or, well, if I'm writing my memoir, I haven't died yet, but yeah, I got old. So after that, we jumped right into the questions, and my first question for her was why her book was based around Arthurian legend. You know, I don't know much about the King Arthur mythos, and so I just wanted to hear anything she had to say about, uh, you know, that and why she wrote her book based on it. Well, um, I've always loved the Arthurian myths and actually the first book I ever wrote which I never published because you know it's the first book you wrote and it really needs a lot of work before it ever sees the light of day but it was it was based on the Arthurian myth it was more of a historical fiction that one than the fantasy I wrote for this but that's it's always been a love of mine so I always wanted to go back to it I guess and I had originally written the um first like the this uh, series started out as a short story that i published in my very first collection i published and then i wrote a second short story in this world for an anthology um legends and lore and after that one i decided to develop it into a series but there was a few other books in between (laughs) and a few other stories in between before it saw the light of day but yeah um that, but I've always wanted to, to write a, an Arthurian book, so I just finally got around to it. As someone who has never read the Arthur legends, I felt kind of lost in various sections. Um, Anita Stewart book relies on people having a background knowledge, and so I felt like her writing was definitely to a niche demographic, and so I asked her about that. Um... Well, uh, yeah, there is a little more background in the first two short stories I wrote. So it's kind of like they re- have been republished as a prequel to this, the past Legends book. So so you do get a little bit of the um, history in, especially in the first short story that I wrote about what's going on, you know, about how Merlin and Nimue uh, interacted and the other things like that. So there is a little bit jumping right into the first book i can understand why you might have been a little confused i did try to kind of mitigate that a little bit in the prologue but i didn't want to i didn't want to just rehash both short stories in the prologue so i was kind of trying to balance it a little bit but yeah i guess the the series is really um written for arthurian fans and people who like that and there are a lot of them actually out there yeah, and um, I do pull in, as the series goes on, I am going to be pulling in a little bit more mythology from other things as well, because you're going to get a little more Welsh mythology, a little more Irish mythology as well. 
pulled into the series. And then I'm also going to be pulling in a little bit of the more traditional fantasy elements because in the second book, she kind of goes hopping through the netherworlds and she meets a couple of elves, a pirate, a dragon. And so there's a little bit of that in the second book as well. So, so Anita's book is really short. It's only 60,000 words and that's really short for an adult fantasy. And I especially felt that there was so much more you could have put in to add character development and background and and all that kind of stuff. And so I was really wondering why it was so short. Well, um, I'm sort of a short writer, actually. Um, you know, I still I'm trying still trying to build up to those big, long, epic books. I mean, because I got my start in short stories, so I'm used to condensing the story so actually moving up from short stories to novels is was kind of difficult so 60k is actually long for me to be honest well actually the, fir the first draft of this was actually 40,000 so <laughs> I actually upped it 20. yeah I, I gotta get up and write one of these days write a big epic fantasy with lots of words I'm, I'm trying that with the historic fantasy I'm working on I'm going to I'm aiming for 90,000 with that one. So hopefully that'll be a little longer. Because the book was so short, I was curious and wanted to ask her if she was an engineer or a gardener. Oh, I'm definitely the engineer because I plan and do scene outlines and I've got the backstory and the future story. And, you know, I mean, I know all these little tidbits about the characters and what they did and stuff and the, of course they don't tell me everything <laughs> i mean i mean i know that that nimway's done some weird stuff in israel because she knows krav maga but she didn't she hasn't told me what she did there yet so yeah well, well the little tidbits don't come to you all the, at once that's the thing i mean you you write it and you think of something and then you think of something else and then you, you add this little thing that you need and then you think about that and wait a minute, how did she do that? I mean, why does she know how to do this? And then so more details start coming to you. So it just, it, it comes in waves and processes and strange things. Yeah. Yeah. I've got timelines, character timelines. I've got character timeline for Nimue. I've got a character timeline for Merlin. I've got a character timeline for the dark wizard and for Guinevere and I've got a couple other ones for other characters yeah so so I keep all the facts straight because they're doing things behind each other's backs and for the because I mean this is a four book series arc that I'm working on so and then with more follow-up to uh, how short the book was I asked her how long it took to write it um that took me 30 days to write the first draft because I did it with NaNoWriMo Oh, uh, the National Novel Writing Month, um, every November, you sit down, you write a 50,000 words in, uh, in uh, 30 days. Yeah, I, I wrote uh, Past Legends, the, the first draft of Past Legends in, in, in November. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. And then um, <laughs> it, the days have started to, to meld. And then I, I wrote uh, about 10,000 words in book two during that month, too. So. So the next question is also something I talk about in my review of the book, which you can find on Goodreads and Amazon. And I just asked her, uh, you know, in my opinion, the writing style is really at odds with a lot of the content in her book. Um, her writing style is much more suited to a younger audience, in my opinion. It doesn't use a lot of big words. Um, it's, it's very easily digested. It doesn't take a whole lot of gray matter to, to read and there's mature content so obviously the content was at odds with how she wrote it and i just wanted to hear her thoughts on that well i think for this book it may have gone that way a little bit because of the i was trying i think i was trying to get more of a contemporary urban fantasy feel with this one um, but in some of the other books you'll find the more flowery language you'll find the the, the longer prose like with my trilogy you'll probably find that a little bit more in the the flowery because that's more epic fantasy so I, I i think i was just changing up styles a little bit for this book 
but I'm I'm and I go for a, a darker audience because I also write horror. So that's definitely an adult audience for the stuff I write in the horror novels. And the horror always bleeds tends to bleed over into my fantasy as well. So so talking about magic systems and how magic systems work and what the rules around them are, whether they're soft or hard or kind of in the middle and how they function is always something I've really enjoyed about fantasy. I think it's one of the things that a lot of fantasy nerds like to talk about. And so I asked her about hers. She has a pretty well soft magic system established and it's not very well defined and I wanted to ask her if she plans on keeping it as a soft magic system with the very few rules that she's kind of placed in it if she's going to leave it vague as she has or if she's going to define it more in the follow-up books yeah well it is going to stay sort of a soft magic system because Arthurian myth in itself is a, a soft magic system I mean a lot of things are contradictory and changing and depending on the retellings and yeah it's sort of mixed up in 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 the legends themselves so i went with the soft magic system i mean there are certain things they can and cannot do and there are certain things you have to have spells for things and spell words for things and so there is there's loose rules for it yeah but th there are limits i've definitely put limits on the magic i mean you can't just go and change anything you want without consequences like like for instance with the portal system if you overload it there are consequences and they're, they're not permanent consequences but they're still consequences and you have things and there are other limits and other uh, uh, rules as, as it goes along so but we are going to be dealing with gods and things later on in the book so i the soft magic system kind of works a little better with them as well because if you're bringing in mytho mythological gods and stuff, which I'm doing in books three and four and a little bit in two, you, the soft magic system kind of works better with their, uh, their mythos. So after that, we hit her with the uh, end of interview question. You know, what is that question that you get most often about your book or your writing in general? And uh, this is what she had to say. Well, the question I get about my writing in general is, you know, um, uh, you know, basically about my um, killing off the characters all the time. It's like, yes, I kill off my characters. I like killing off my characters. I have no problem killing off my characters. <laughs> That's the one question I keep getting. Like, Do you have a problem killing off your characters? And every time I say no, I have no problem killing them off. I enjoy killing them. <laughs> Well, kind of, yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then we just had the uh, classic end of interview stuff, you know, the, the plugs and where you can find her stuff and all that good stuff. Um, well, they can find me and my books mostly on my website, afsteward.ca. Um, all my books, or most of my books are on Amazon. Uh, that's where you can find Path Legends because it's in Kindle Unlimited at the moment. And it's on pre-order at the moment. It goes into release on October 28th. The prequel is Eternal Myths, and you, that is up wide because it's been the stories were previously published. It wasn't eligible for KU, so and you can find that pretty much on any retailer. And all the rest of my books are wide, except for Visions and Nightmares, and that one's in KU as well. <laughs> 